So, uh, sad news. Robert Fisk, veteran UK journalist, dies at age 74. It's sad because he was a great war correspondent. They say he's controversial because he told the truth about war. That's all it takes is to tell the truth as a reporter about war, and they call you controversial. Robert Fisk, who had British and Irish citizenship, covered wars in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Bosnia, Kosovo, Israel, and its Palestinian territories, Northern Ireland, Algeria, and Lebanon, where he long made Beirut his base. You cannot get near the truth without being there, he said. Across nearly five decades, Mr. Fisk was unquestionably there. He made no pretense of adhering to conventional notions of journalistic objectivity, essentially arguing that there was no on the other hand in certain situations. I think it is the duty of a foreign correspondent to be neutral and unbiased on the side of those who suffer, wherever they may be. His dispatches earned him many accolades. Seven times he was named the British Press Awards International Journalist of the Year. Robert Fisk, in the long hours of darkness, Baghdad shakes to the constant low rumble of B-52. So that's when he covered the Iraq War. The twisted language of war that is used to justify the unjustifiable. He wrote that April 7th, 2003. Robert Fisk, would President Assad invite a cruise missile to his palace? Why Syria is in America's gun sight? So he told the truth about Syria. So he also debunked that stupid gas attack in Duma. He was on the scene, debunked it. We reported his reporting. No one else in the United States would do that. Isn't that amazing? A jag off in his garage. A pothead comedian would. You know who wouldn't? Rachel Maddow, Chris Hayes, Jake Tapper. The usual pieces of shit who are lying to you on a daily basis. Cowards, all of them. They're all cowards. Of the highest order. Robert Fiss brought home the unimaginable horrors of war. As his editor, I greatly admired him. In the middle of the night on March 3rd, 2003, I was woken up by a phone call. The Americans have just started bombing Baghdad. We had made sure Robert Fisk was on the spot when the attack was launched. At 4 a.m. UK time, Fisk made contact. He wanted to file his own piece over the phone. I listened in as our chief sub-editor took down his words. I kid you not, you could hear the bombs clearly in the background as Fisk was dictating, unruffled and unhurried. That was a bit close, he said, as an explosion drowned out his words. War made Fisk angry. And he hated, uh, unlike Tom Brokaw and the American press corps, they love war. How about, Rob, how, how about Brian Williams? We are guided by the beauty of our missiles. War made Fisk angry. And he hated the way it was presented, sanitized, he'd say, by the world's media. And it is. If you saw what I saw in wars, which you don't, because television cuts out the bloodiest scenes, oh no, we can't see the horror. But we should. We should see the pornography of death. Because if you saw what I saw, dogs tearing corpses to pieces and women and children bombed in the desert, you would never support war again. Never Ever. So he died at 74, one of the best journalists ever in the history of journalism, certainly one of the best war correspondents of all time. Told the truth. He was controversial because he told the truth about war. He wasn't controversial because he was crazy. He wasn't controversial because he got stuff wrong. He wasn't controversial because he had crazy ideas. He was controversial because he told the truth about war, something you're not allowed to do. So, R.I.P. Robert Fisk. He made our reporting on Syria a lot easier. He did the real hard work. Tip of the hat, the world's a worse place off without him. Really sad. So young. 74? That's very young. My dad's 91. Give you an example. 
Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you to join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.